Hi everyone. So here we have another week has gone by and we are here yet again with PKM Weekly. And this is your 10 day warning of Christmas for those that celebrate it. You have 10 days to get your act together. So if you haven't already done so, get to it. So before that though, let's get to what's new in the PKM world. So capacities, they've got version 1.43.47. This was released last week. A couple of improvements, um, inline link edit menu has been improved. So just easier to use. And then there's also the search bar um, automatically focused if you do an object selection and you can turn blocks into objects. Um, so just in long form texts, if it's moved, it can be easily created. A few fixes as well um, that the devs have been working through. And other than that, not too much from the capacity side. I wonder what they've got lined up for the end of year, if there's going to be a new release or not, but we shall see. Um, OP, they've asked uh, using capacities for journaling. So basically they want to do a separate object for journal entries, uh, one date per entry and so on and so forth. And they are stating why not to use the actual daily note rather than the journal entries. And basically they give a few reasons of their thoughts of why it's best. It's really for longevity, uh, basically future proofing so that they can keep their journals and their their thoughts in an easier way. And what he did do, they posted it on Reddit and it's quite a few responses here of uh, different points of view and whatnot. So do check that out if you're also nervous about future proof proofing your daily notes. Logseek, they have, uh, last week they opened up the Logseek DB version for more testing and more feedback. And basically there's about a thousand people or so that signed up, uh, or more than a thousand that signed up. And initially they envisaged allowing 200 per month, if I'm not mistaken, and now they've changed that to 200 per week. So if you are one of the people that haven't received a, like a, P, um, a DM on Discord or a ping to be part of the feedback channel, just hold on for a little bit more and I'm sure it will come through soon enough. And as a reminder, you don't actually need to be part of this um, feedback group. If you want to test it out, simply go to test.logseek.com and you can play around with it at your heart's content, but it's just that the devs will not accept your feedback or they will, they will ignore it for the time being as um, they don't want to be overwhelmed by feedback from everyone. But the good thing is, is that it is being tested by more and more people. So hopefully that will mean that it's um, going to be released relatively soon. And on that note, uh, Ramses did provide a little bit of an update of what he expects um, going through testing of the alpha phase. Uh, this is a response to a comment on the, discor on the uh, discourse on the forum of Vlogseek that basically it seemed like the user was saying three months it's going to be released. That's not the case. Um, we don't know the exact date, but it will be when we, when we feel comfortable with it. So there's that going on. And at the same time, I believe there's also real time collaboration going on. So the DB version should make that a lot easier to implement and do. So I think both of them are being tested in parallel, or at least the real time collaboration is being thought of and the groundwork is being implemented. So we shall see what happens with this one. And hopefully they don't leave it too late with other apps coming up and taking the spot. Um, Logseek Web Clipper, so uh, a user basically created a browser extension that allows you to save content from the web, from your web browser to Logseek directly. And it's basically a fork of the Obsidian Web Clipper, just adopted for Logseek. So if you like the Obsidian Web Clipper, um, this one you should, you should like it just as much. Uh, it allows to clip anything, entire pages, context, or just the highlights, you can do templates, smart integrations, so you can put it, uh, send clips to where, where you want it to go. And it's privacy first as everything is stored in a markdown file. So if you want to learn more, you can check out the GitHub or just click on this link to install it. And then there was a comment or a blog post about which Obsidian alternative is better for you, Capacities or Logseek. So the, the blog post basically goes through the differences between the two, the Capacities and Logseek different approaches that they take, why some might work for one approach, why the other approach might work for others, and basically just gives the point of view. The conclusion is really, uh, as per everything, it depends on which type of user you are. If you prefer 
local files, markdown files, or soon to be DB files, and in an outline, outliner format, then LogSeq's the one for you. If you don't mind your data being stored on the cloud and are a more object-orientated person, then Capacities is the one for you. But it's, it's a decent article and goes through some of the nuances between the two, so do check that out if you are looking for an Obsidian alternative. Tana, we've got a few updates. So the Android mobile app, so obviously the iOS app was released a week or two ago. That seems to be going well, and in fact, there's been a few updates already on it. Um, so that's, that's going uh, smoothly, it seems. Although you still cannot edit um, and delete nodes, if I remember right. So still some work to be, to be done and implemented. And on the Android app, so from the 2nd of December, so about 10 days ago, they hired a new um, Android native developer, and they are working on the app itself. And in fact, our goal is to release an alpha version to a small group of testers sometime in mid-January. So hopefully, mid-January, that's going to be it's going to be released. That's the end of January, a month or so to test. Maybe end of Q1, it will be um, in the hands of a few more people. So fingers crossed for that, if you are a Android user. The affiliate webinar uh, that was meant to take place last week, that unfortunately had to be pushed back to this coming week. So it's gonna be on Tuesday the 17th at 9 p.m. Uh, European time. And basically uh, just gonna go through of what the affiliate program is, how the TANA team envisages it to work, and ask any questions from the crowd. And Lucas, so if you are not sure of what TANA is, how it works, or you're just getting started with it, and this is good, quite timely because I believe that TANA is going to open up the doors to quite a few, uh, or just make it open rather than having to go through an invite. Uh, Lucas, he basically updated his course that he did a couple of years ago, if not three years ago, um, and basically just goes through the TANA fundamentals. Is There's already two videos of it on YouTube, um, with more coming on the way. And it's as at December 2024, so it's at current, so you will get the current um, iterations of TANA, so it, should, it is up to date, and he explains everything in a clear and concise way, unlike what I'm trying to do right now. So do check that out if you are interested in getting to started with TANA and learning more about it, or even learning just how Lucas uses it, and the ins and outs of the app. Obsidian, um, they've got handwriting in Obsidian. This is their plugin. It is a relatively old plugin, but I only found about found out about it uh, this week. And basically, it enables you to handwrite or draw using a iPad pencil, um, Samsung tablet, whatever it is, um, that you can use to basically take handwritten notes directly within Obsidian. So if you haven't come across this, do check it out. Uh, do check it, check out the plugin. Give it a test uh, because it does seem to be very impressive. And there's a brief video here from about 10 months ago of how it works. This is a bit of a recurring theme. I want to use Obsidian better. So basically, OP feels like Obsidian is a gold mine, which I agree it is. But they just want to be able to use it uh, better to, their, to the best of their abilities, get more information out of it, how better to put information in and they're asking for tutorials and recommendations of how to get it set up and how you can use Obsidian to basically get the most out of it. There is quite a number of comments um, and responses that have been provided, so do check it out if you're in the same boat. I think that it really comes down to just using it. Um, don't be worried about changing your workflow as you go along. I mean, at the end of it, it's just text files. Don't go crazy installing hundreds of plugins because uh, inevitably these will stop um, stop being updated, um, Obsidian updates the core app, the plugin is not updated, you're going to run into issues. Handful of plugins and just, just start, start taking notes, um, start retrieving information from it, see what works, see what doesn't, and, and just play around with it. And you will find a workflow that works best for you, especially as a workflow that works for me may not be the same that works for you as we're all different. So that's my recommendation of if you want to use Obsidian or any PKM app, just get started. Just take notes and retrieve information and play with it. Um, this one was a second brain assistant within Obsidian. So there's a blog post here about how you can implement various different AI models, um, RAG models, direct integration with, with Obsidian. 
um, AIs, etc. So do check that out if you are interested because it goes through quite a lot of detail and gives a good few examples of how you can integrate AI within Obsidian. Or you can just do what Sarah mentioned she might do, and that's take Anthropic's Claude model and link that to your local drive where your Obsidian notes are saved and letting it run with that. So do check that out if you want to give it a try. Still, I don't know why Substack doesn't allow Twitter embeds, but there we go. So now we get to the other notes, other notes apps. So Seth Yuan, they did quite a good few plugins on LogSeq, very good ones. And they've now trying their hand at a app themselves. So they've released Orca Notes. And basically the way that it's been built, it's the best of both outliner and long form editing. It's uh, currently in beta, it's 0 0.18 or 1.9 is the version that's just been released with various different um, updates, uh, 0 0.19 it is. So just basically he's going through it um, and just updating the app as he sees. There's no import to begin with and a few things are missing which Sethion is, is aware of it but it's just fresh, fresh, off the, uh, fresh off the boat if you will. And it's actually quite good. Uh, you can download it, test it out, play around with it. There's quite a lot of good functionality there. Uh, quite a lot of the design has, seems to have been taken from LogSeq, but I guess that's what happens uh, when you're a user of an app for a while and then you do your own app. But it's, uh, it differentiates itself enough from LogSeq to be to warrant a mention here. So well done, Sethion, for doing that. Looking forward to seeing how that goes. Note uh, or Note EY. Um, they basically have a app um, which was pointed out to me recently and it allows you to just basically see your notes in a visual um, in a visual manner, a bit like Heptabase and Scrintle, so it's just an alternative to those ones. So do check that out if you're interested. It's offline, it's secure, it's fast, uh, it does a lot of the things. You can annotate PDFs, put notes, cards, play around with the cards on a whiteboard. Um, so do, do have a look at that and the developer is very responsive. So if you've got any suggestions or tweaks, they are bound to fix them or implement them uh, to the best of their ability. Heptabase, they did something a little bit left field um, and even Antoine said, I didn't see this coming and he's just posted a video on it and it's basically that allowing you to take your podcasts or uh, search for podcasts already within Heptabase and basically convert them, transcribe them, take notes from them already all within Heptabase itself. So this is something completely new. I've not seen any other app doing it apart from really Snipped, which is a podcast listening app or that's what they're geared towards, but it was a bit different for a PKM app to do it. So well done Heptabase for being quite innovative in this one and do check it out if you haven't already done so. Uh, or check out the video from Antoine as it's uh, very interesting. Anytype, they did their end of year um, town hall uh, last week. Basically went through how 2024 has been, what they've been up to, the benefits or the successes and failures, and as well as what they've got planned for 2025. So it was very useful, an hour or so long, and they talk about it, but they also answer a significant number of questions from the community and um, there was a summary posted on the um, Discord or whatever it's called, the, the community of any type and this is basically a summary so thank you to the OP that created this summary which I've shamefully or unshamefully just stolen so you can see here what they've, what they were chatting about and what the plans are for the upcoming future. And then Affine, um, they tease us again. They basically posted that if you're looking to expand your workspace with more users, they have exciting news coming. And yet again, it's, it's coming here. Um, not much more than this at this stage, either here or on the, um, on the Discord, on the Affine Discord, but I'm guessing it's just collaboration. It's gonna be implemented or made a lot easier within Affine so that you can have more users seeing your notes. And not really a new one, but Readwise, uh, they've been publishing updated videos all over the place, which has been great, because uh, I'd actually forgotten how good Readwise was. So if you're in the same boat, do check out the Readwise video or YouTube channel, because they have been making a lot of good videos explaining the ins and outs, explaining the, what, how you can set it up, how you can get the most out of Readwise, 
uh, within your PKM world and even outside of it, uh, podcasts, news apps, emails, Twitter, etc. You can all feed it in to Readwise. So that's it for this week. So thank you very much again for being here. And I look forward to seeing you next week. Thanks very much. Bye.